Hi everybody, I'm Rachel Platten, and this is BMI's Virtual Tours. In a lot of ways, I look at this new album, I Am Rachel Platten, as my proper introduction to the world. I feel like I was well known for Fight Song and that was one side of me. Um, and I'm really proud of that. And I'm really proud that it resonated the way it did. But I don't feel like I got a chance to show all the sides of me, the many layers of me as a human being. It was just kind of the empowered, hopeful, positive side. I've also been through so much in the, in the past seven years. I've become a mother, I've struggled with my mental health, and I have overcome a lot. And through that healing process and finding myself again and kind of almost like this rebirth of who I am, um, the change in me is, is really reflected in my music and in my songwriting. And so the project would be different even if I like didn't try to sonically differentiate it just by my voice. But I did intentionally go back to my roots of how I started as an artist, which was a lot more organic and musician-based, and we recorded it in Nashville. And so the sonics are more warm, they're more organic, they're more real. I really hope that what I've gone through and how I found myself again and found my joy and my light again after so much darkness. Um, I hope it's a beacon of hope for other people. I hope it's a kind of light in the dark, a hand back into the you know darkness of like, hey, I've been there. I know how brutal it can feel to feel all alone and feel scared and feel like you won't, you know, taste that freedom and joy again. And I also know that you will. And my hope is that the music and my journey and what I've been through and what I wrote about it and how vulnerable I was and how honest I've been in the music, I hope it helps my fans and helps the world in, in whatever small way it can. This album was not that at all. This album was like, what do I need? How can my songwriting help me? Because I was struggling so much and I was really public about what I went through with my um, mental health battles after the birth of both of my babies. And I was in such a low place and I was in such a broken place that the last thing on my mind was like, um, what do people need and, and how do I give them what they need for my music? It was like, how can I save my own life? I think it was the night that I recorded um, Bad Thoughts. The vocal was so easy to record and that was wild because it's like a really intense vocal and it's it's really emotional singing but it was coming so freely I was sitting I was standing right here um my mic was set up over there and it was at night and we lit candles and there was just a holiness to the moment and um I remember the sound coming out of my mouth and it was so beautiful. Like I was like, not to brag, but I was like, who is singing? You know, this can't be my voice. That ever happened? I just, it was so wonderful. And it felt like something bigger than me must be doing it. Cause surely that couldn't be me. Bad Thoughts was originally called, um, listen to this if you're having a panic attack, which I thought might be like a little heavy for Spotify. <laughs> so I changed it to Bad Thoughts, but you know, I wrote it with the same intention that I went into writing Fight Song with. Like I really wrote it with this intention of may this be of service, may this help someone who's really struggling right now. And um, I wanted to use my pain in a way, like in a way of service, you know? Um, and I weave breath work in and out of the song. And there's like breathing cues, which I'd never heard in a pop song before. I've only heard in the like meditations. And I don't know, it felt strange, but it felt so right. I just started doing it when I got on the mic because my friend Nick put in this ocean sound that's in the background of the track. 
And when the song came on and these chords started and I played this right here, this piano, um, I just felt this like whisper of breathe in. Breathe out. And then I started singing and um, it made it way, it's made its way onto the record. I think it played an absolutely pivotal role. It was really, really special to get to own that and be the producer and be the executive producer and have oversight of the whole entire project. Like, I don't think that I ever took that, you know, ownership before, which is crazy because it's my music. But I think I always used to look around like, well, someone's got to know better than me. Why I'm, I can't be the authority here. Um, whereas now, you know, I, with two kids and turning 40 and having been doing this for 20 years, I'm like, of course I'm the fucking authority. Yes, right. Why wouldn't I be the person to ask and look to? Yeah. That collage over there on top of the, you know, my desk right there, that was actually the collage that I made for myself right before I was gonna go into labor with my first daughter, Violet. And all of that, all the phrases in there, um, believe in you, fearlessly, release, breathe, embrace, open. I mean, they're, they're kind of corny, but like, but for me, they were exactly what I needed to remember. I was so afraid of giving birth, as probably all of us are. Like, we've never done it before, and it's terrifying. And so that collage, I brought it with me into the hospital, and um, it, we framed it after Violet came into the world, and I remember thinking to myself, wait, all of these words and all these cues are exactly what I would tell my artist self too when I'm creating. So it has a perfect home in here. So to me, I think that maybe that's the most special thing. They've expanded my creativity. They've like brought so much expansion to my heart, you know, both the positive and the negative and like the fear and anxiety that comes with being a mom and also the absolute joy and wonder and like how in love you are with them. Yeah, also they watch me, you know, like they see their mom and I want to make them proud and I want to show them an example that one day, like you can do it, you can do anything, you can overcome the hardest things. Um, and it's important to me that they see me on stage I don't know that I have figured out how to balance it. I don't know that I ever will figure out how to balance it. Right now, the only thing that I know how to do, and it's probably not the right thing, but it's what I do, is kind of go extreme into them. You know, like I'll be intensely on the road for a week and really locked into my career and really locked into what my music needs for me. And obviously checking in and sending them postcards and FaceTiming. But then I'll come home and be like really intensely in mom mode and fill up their cup and my cup that way. And then I'll go fill up my, you know, my husband and I's cup. And like, that's kind of what I do right now is, is like, you can't, you can have it all, but you can't have it all at the same time. My favorite thing in the studio is my piano, by far. This is my, this is my baby. And like, I have a beautiful grand piano in the, in the house that my husband got me for my 40th birthday. It's a Steinway and it's 1928 and it's gorgeous. But I write all my best stuff right here. This is the piano that um, was in my parents' house that I grew up writing on. And um, there's like a warmth to the sound. It feels like home to me. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it's the most, I think it's my favorite thing I own in the world. You know, there's a lot of rage and grief and pain and trauma that we carry around that, that builds up through a lifetime that we're not told is safe to outlet in any way. And for me, the creative process is the way that I would excavate that and, and understanding myself and like kind of looking in the dark and like shining a light in the dark and then turning those, um, that pain into songs, into art was really so incredibly healing for me and and one of the ways that I've healed myself many times in this in this life um so I would say that first you need to get in touch with what's there you know and what is we can't skate past those emotions and try to write something that we're not authentically feeling that day or we can and other people can do it it's just not my process
writing mercy was like right there and then i i, I was wailing like oh mercy and it turned into a song like i was actually crying out like enough stop and i think it originally started as just like oh mercy and, and then it became a melody and then i realized it was a song and I realized that something was writing through me because it could not be me because I was a mess. And all of a sudden this unbelievable song came in like 20 minutes or unbelievable to me. Um, and, and then I remember, oh my gosh, this was so beautiful. I remember because I was crying and I was really not okay in that moment. And these little bouncy chords started. I started to hear them and I just played them. And there was the haunting echo from the piano. Can you hear that? And I was like, there's dirt in my nails from scraping the walls. And I thought I hit bottom. So am I still falling? And this like really haunting sweetness filled with pain came out of me. And then the chorus like, oh, see. Right? I was like, really? This part when I was writing it, I was literally crying out to God. I didn't even know if God was real. And I just was screaming like, come on, love me now. Come on, love me now. Come on, love me now. Love me now, love me now. And I just kept singing that like, come on, let's go. Give me an answer, where are you? You know, just the most human thing that we can do is cry out to our creator. What the hell am I doing here? This is awful, help me. <laughs> anyway. So that's where mercy came from. I think what I've learned through everything I've gone through, through the making of this album, through rising up from such a hard place, is that I can love myself just for who I am. And when I look in the mirror, I almost feel this like old permission to love myself no matter what, you know, to love myself despite lines or freckles or gray hairs or whatever other people, what the world has conditioned us to think isn't lovable. But it, I don't know, it's kind of radical to look at yourself and be like, hey, you are allowed to love yourself just as you are. And I hope that's what my music makes you feel. <laughs>